Thanks for joining us. I'm Paula Evan with the WBZ News Update. Our top stories. Officials in New Hampshire have declared an emergency warning at Hampton Beach due to extreme high seas and flooding after the overnight storm. Ocean Boulevard is closed and police are asking residents to seek higher ground and avoid that area until further notice. The gymnasium at Hampton Academy is open for those seeking an evacuation shelter. Nearby Massachusetts town Salisbury is also seeing significant flooding and parts of Beach Road near Reservation Road and March Road are flooded and impassable. Today marks one year since a woman from Brookfield was last seen. Brittany T. was last seen walking away from her home towards Main Street, but canine sweeps, helicopter searches, and ground searches as well have turned up nothing. Her family says the sudden departure was out of character for her. If you have any information on this case, we have the contact information for investigators on our website, wbz.com. T's friends are planning a vigil for tonight on the Town Common. Mayor Wu announced several new initiatives during her State of the City address, including a partnership between local colleges and the Boston Public Schools. There are also offers for Boston students and family members to get some free admission to several museums or attractions in the city. And the mayor says keeping people in Boston is a priority. This year, we will eliminate barriers for residents to build ADUs citywide and support local contractors in getting them built. I'm excited to announce that this year, we will identify locations for nearly 3,000 new public housing units to build over the next decade, and the federal government will provide more than $100 million a year to maintain them. The mayor also talked about what the city accomplished over the past year, including reducing gun violence and cleaning up the area near Mass and Cass. Now, the second storm of the week is over, but we're tracking the third already heading our way for this weekend. So let's get a check on the latest forecast with meteorologist Jason Michael. Multi-tiered, multifaceted storm. That's what I was describing this storm system earlier this week, Paula, and that has really lived up to its name. Top tier number one has been the flooding issues across the area experienced within the past 24 hours. On top of that, second tier, the high wind gusts, and both of those have really caused several issues across the area today. Multifaceted, still dealing with some of the parade of issues across the area, limiting visibility well above normal temperatures. And a lot of this has really kind of been interceding into our region over the past several days or so. A parade of systems is set to continue for the rest of the week, getting into the start of the weekend. Now let's go to our flooding concerns. That has been the number one priority we've been talking about in our forecast with the heavier rain in the forecast. We're starting to see more and more of these bright colored greens pop up on the map, indicating some flooding issues across the area with rivers rapidly rising. One of them being the Blackstone River down in North Bridge. We're watching that one, but also in southern New Hampshire, we're dealing with some flooding issues along the coastline. So let me point something out to you. So obviously this coastline really kind of curves over to the north and east. We've almost had a parallel effect of that strong line that moved through earlier today, really dumping down a lot of rain. And what has not helped this region has been high tide that was astronomically high that came in earlier this morning between the 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. hour. We were still dealing with periods of very heavy rain up there. So this entire area stretching from southern New Hampshire through Ogonquit, getting into the coastline of Maine is still going to be dealing with uh, a large amount of flooding issues for the rest of the week because we have another system coming in late Friday into Saturday. So this is not good, good news for that area. Pretty impressive numbers that we had rake in earlier this morning, even down towards Cranston, Rhode Island. They've been dealing with some uh, high flooding issues there as well. Rainfall totals. This was the latest uh, graphic that we updated earlier this morning. Look at that. These numbers uh, really made a high impression even on myself with a period of heavy rain that came in within just a couple hours or so over four inch well over four inches in fact in Hopkinton rent them over four inches north bridge where Blackstone River is expected to crest later on today about four inches and a quarter there Wellesley over uh, three inches and just about three and a quarter you can see for Tuxbury this is the latest graphic as you can see here as far as river court forecast is concerned when you start to look 
look at some of the more prominent uh, arteries in terms of rivers and even streams, this is what you're looking at here, as well as what's sort of kind of been working in tandem with some of the heavier rain that we have moved through earlier today. This was the line, friends. This was the line that really held up. Once it got into sea, it started to break apart, but that line came through and it came through in a mighty force. On the back side of it, we're still going to be dealing with uh, quieter conditions moving back in, but a few stragglers in terms of rainfall will be moving through later on today as well. We are not done though. Once we get to Thursday and Friday, these are the days that we can clean up, we can fully assess, and then we prepare what arrives for us on Saturday. Another rainy and windy event that wind carries over into Sunday, Paula. And look at that. By Monday and Tuesday, we are embarking on another system that is going to get its marching orders as it braces across the country and possibly cause some snow chances for us. Paula? Jason, thank you. I'm Paula Evan. This has been a WBZ News Update.